When you start a business, it just inclines. Like, it's just a rising slope that goes to the tippy top top. But that is not entrepreneurship, baby. What's up CEOs, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I want to welcome you to our community of ambitious entrepreneurs who are dedicated to growing their business. On this channel, I love to share valuable insights, practical tips, and expert advice on how you can navigate the entrepreneurial world with ease and with confidence. Today, I'm going to be talking about things I wish I knew before starting a business. Yes, I feel like entrepreneurship is glamorized on social media, but not enough people talk about the bad of it. And it comes with its dark side. It comes with um, cons, you know, and it's not this fancy cars, homes, uh, millions of dollars, luxurious lifestyle. You know, that could be your ultimate goal, but the road to get there, ooh. It could be a little bit rocky, a lot of bit rocky, <laughs> a lot of bit rocky, but it's all worth it. You know, I wouldn't take anything away from um, the path I've chosen and um, I'm just embracing every single thing. Like I have grown tremendously. I honestly believe that entrepreneurship is one of the greatest forms of personal development. Let me go ahead and say this again. I truly, truly believe and know that entrepreneurship is one of the greatest forms of personal development. Like before I became a business owner, I was not the woman I am today and I am a proud to be her but it just forced me like in order to have a successful business like running a seven-figure business it forced me to develop skills and qualities that uh, you know leadership roles c communication like I would have never done working a nine to five job just to be honest like a whole different mindset um discipline yeah, we could go all into it. But I compiled up a list of lessons that I've learned through my entrepreneur career. And I just wanna share that with you today. So if you're thinking about being an entrepreneur, getting into business, or if you're in the early stages of doing so, then this video is for you. All right, so lesson number Lesson number one is identifying your passion and your purpose. All right, I know sometimes when somebody says, when somebody might say to you, what's your passion or what's your purpose? If you haven't really thought about it, you'll be stuck and you'll be like, uh, I don't know. Like I was that person not too long ago for a very long time. I was just stuck, right? So you, I truly believe that business owners who love what they do, do things the best. Like I have been in restaurants and I can tell like small restaurants, for example, and I could tell when, let's say we're comparing two restaurants and both owners work at those restaurants, an owner who hates their job and the owner who loves their job, totally different experience, um, totally different food quality. Like it's just a totally different vibe whatsoever. And I feel like that's with any business. Like if you're not gonna be passionate and really into it, cause this is your life. You, you, it's just better to run, it's, it's, it's better to run. I won't say it's easier, but it's more enjoyable to run. And if you was like me, where, for example, I don't have a passion. Like I realized, like, I, I realized this might sound crazy, but I didn't have a passion of any type of work. Like I didn't, I don't, I'm not passionate about work or I'm not, I don't have a pa I don't know. I've never been passionate about anything. So if this is you and you're trying to understand what is it, what is my passion? What is my purpose? Then you need to go into a deep self-reflection. So this is what I did to help me identify what my passion is and what my purpose is. And if you already have a passion and you just need to make sure that it's a passion that you can monetize, you can make money off of, and it's something that you can grow, and, um, a business that you could grow because at the end of the day, it is a business, right? So you wanna make sure you're making a great business decision. If the passion is not a great business decision, then you should look into something else. But I'm about to tell you what I did to help me identify how to get into the industry that I am in today. So I asked myself, 
um, what's my ideal lifestyle, right? That was the first thing. You want to build a business around your life, your lifestyle, and not have a lifestyle around your business. I feel like that's one major mistake that a lot of small business owners make. Build a business around your life, not the other way around, right? So I asked myself, what is my ideal lifestyle? Okay, my ideal lifestyle is not working all day, every day. Like I'm okay with doing that for the first like five to 10 years, but eventually I wanna be able to work four hours a week and make a good amount of money, right? I don't wanna work all day, every day in my business. So I already thought long-term, I'm gonna have to build a team. I'm gonna have to get proper um, systems in place. I'm gonna have to get automation in place. Like I'm already thinking long-term because eventually I want to get myself out of my business. So I'm already in that detached mindset. Like, look, I'm not building something that I'm gonna be holding and cradling all my life. No, I have I have came across so many small business owners who are working in their business un until the day they die, right? Um, but that's not me. I don't want to do that. So I already came up with that. All right. And I want to have an online business because as I'm building up my brand, as I'm building up my business, I want to be able to work from anywhere. I want to have an online business. That was important for me. I want to be able to work from anywhere because I love to travel. Right. Um, I, I want to be able to go out the country and still get my work done. So I knew not having a physical location was something that would be ideal for my lifestyle. Right. So I'm not opening up a restaurant. I'm not opening up a retail store. I'm not doing anything that's going to require me to be physically bound in order to make money. I also wanted to make money in my sleep. I want to be able to um, be paid by my value and not my time. Right. Because, for example, if you're a nail tech or um, like uh you own a dry cleaners or you know like you are paid by your time right like you are paid by the hour essentially and um i wanted to have an online business because i could make one product that sells to hundreds of, and thousands of people and I don't have to keep making another product to get paid. So uh, that's just what I wanted. Another thing is I wanted to, the way I feel fulfilled is that I wanted to um, help people. I really wanted to make an impact on my community and I chose to be in a financial industry because one, I like finances, I don't know why but i know it's weird but i do like finances i am interested in studying finances how it works um growing up my family was very financially illiterate so um it was a very important for me and imperative for me to learn finances like at least the fundamentals of it but essentially to grow at the rate i wanted to grow and to have the financial freedom i wanted to have i need to learn more than the basics so um studying it for myself and seeing how big of an impact that understanding financial literacy made on my life i decided to pursue this path because i wanted to have help people around me have that same impact so especially of black and brown color like we lack financial literacy tremendously and i realized that this information it would it would just never be taught in schools the way it needs to be well i'm not gonna say never hopefully they might but i don't really think they will to the extent that it's going to be beneficial to our community as a whole and many households don't teach this i didn't have this my family didn't have it so it means a lot to me to be able to share this knowledge and finances can be um like science to some people it could be a, a, a foreign language to some people and i'm able to break it down in simple forms where my community can understand where i'm coming from so it makes me feel fulfilled like helping people buy houses helping people start businesses get cars like that really warms my heart and um and i just i just love it so it checked off like being in a financial industry checked off my big purpose so that's why i chose the route that i'm in it's not that i'm necessarily passionate about credit or passionate about financials it's just that this is the vehicle that helps me reach my ultimate goal which is time freedom money freedom fulfillment on helping my community fulfillment on helping um, the people around me be better people more successful people grow and um just helping me be where i want to be as well so that's how i determine like what is my purpose and what aligns with my lifestyle i know that was pretty long my next tip is 
when you're starting a business, you want to conduct extensive research, okay? Conduct extensive research, right? Do not, please do not start a business just because somebody on social media made it seem very easy to do and made it seem like they're going to give you all the step-by-step guide you need to be successful do your own due diligence do your own research starting a business takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money so you want to really and fully understand truly and fully understand what it takes to run and operate whatever business you're looking to start. You want to know your target audience. Who are you going to be selling to? Who are you going to be servicing? Is this aligned with your goals, your values, and the people you want to work with, right? Because as a small business owner, you can choose the type of people you want to work with. Um, What are the market trends? Um, Who are your competitors? You want to study your competitors. Um, is this a growing business or is this a declining business? How long of, um, how long, if, if this is a new industry, like do, is there historical data of this industry that you could look into, um, to see how successful it is. You want to take time really analyzing the demand for your product and service. And you want to make sure that it is a very, very high demand. I would like to challenge you to actually think outside the box of what's popular or what's hot right now because if you could bring something new to the marketplace and it has a really high demand for it that's how you win faster but you know i believe in both sides i believe that you can bring something to new to the marketplace like low-key be an inventor or something um of course that's going to have its own challenges because you'll have really no one to kind of copy which is it could be a good thing but you'll have a harder time um growing that business because you're starting from scratch and then i also believe on not reinventing the wheel but when the wheel is so saturated then you have to figure out ways to make yourself unique and make yourself stand out from the crowd so you're just your your product or your service is not just a commodity next next lesson is to build a strong network Okay, build a strong network, have the right people around you, get in the right rooms. I wish I knew this before starting a business and deciding that I wanted to elevate and grow, that my closest friends and family will most likely no longer like be attached to me or will no longer click like that for real. Because when I wanted to grow my business, I had to isolate myself. I had to elevate my mindset and the people that I was used to being around my closest friends and family they weren't on the same page so I had to detach myself from them and it caused some type of animosity sometimes animosity distance um a lot of my family didn't understand um and it was hard it was really really hard and it was very frustrating to um watching my family essentially like turn on me low-key like you think you better than everybody oh you too good for us or you don't ever have time for us you know it just it just became this whole like i don't know i didn't it took me a long time to realize i shouldn't take it personal but um it sucked it really sucked and um i had to literally develop a new family kind of like i i'm still family with my family by blood and you know i hang out with them during the holidays and i try to stay connected with them as much as possible but they just don't serve me and that's just something i wasn't prepared for um and i definitely wasn't prepared for their their reaction either um to to my success and to me wanting to grow as an individual and as a human being but i had to make sure i get around the right people And this is crazy, but my husband and I, we started our business in Charlotte, North Carolina. In three years in our business, we decided to move to a whole different city and state, Atlanta, Georgia. It was just us, no family here. We had like a couple friends. And the reason why we moved is because of the opportunity and because we knew that we would be around like-minded individuals. We would be in the right rooms. And I kid you not, us making that move doubled our income. We've only been here for like a year and a half now, and I know it's about to triple our income by the end of this year. But it's just so essential that you're in the right rooms, you're with the right people, because you don't, you never know who you might meet that's going to give you that advice or give you that help and guidance that you may need that's going to take you five years in advance in a short period of time. And you also need that encouragement. You need that motivation. Like, I can't call my family and, and, um, like, I can't really call my family and talk to them about my problems because honestly, 
to them i don't got no problems because because i could pay my bills <laughs> if i don't have money problems i don't got no problems <laughs> unfortunately they, like my family dead ass think i don't have problems i'm just this perfect human being that exists on this planet earth all because i don't struggle with my bills ain't that crazy but anyway i could call my entrepreneur friends or friends people that i've established great relationships with that understands the field that i'm in and um just vent to them and get great advice from them. And it's just different. Uh, it's just a whole different world. But build a strong network, get in the right rooms. And if you have to cut off your family, do so. Don't let them take you down. I know that's a hard pill to swallow. That might be a hard pill to swallow for you, but it's the honest tr truth, okay? Um, my next tip is embrace failure and learn from your mistakes, okay? Failing is inevitable. The greatest of the greatest inventors and entrepreneurs have failed at some point of their career. Like we could go down the list. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, shoot Henry Ford. Okay, anybody, like anybody, everybody fails. That's just the nature of it. And if you're the type of person that wants to avoid failure, I don't know. I would say you should just avoid life, but that doesn't sound good. <laughs> you should reconsider being an entrepreneur. You should definitely reconsider being an entrepreneur because you got to be cut from a different cloth, okay? A lot of people might think that entrepreneurship looks like this. Like when you start a business, it just inclines. Like it's just a rising slope that goes to the tippy top top. But that is not entrepreneurship, baby. Entrepreneurship is like... <laughs> you just never know what... Like, Literally, like I'm having a two year all high streak one time. Two year all high streak, I'm like, ain't no stopping me. Like, ain't no coming down. Like, you can't touch me. Like, got a little bit of coffee too. And after that two years, boom, plumbing. I'm like, yo, how this happen? But that's just entrepreneurship. You want to literally just embrace it. You know, you want to be smart about your money. Uh, when you start making a little bit more money, don't increase your expenses too fast. I would say wait at least six months to a year of that consistent revenue before you start even increasing your expenses. That's something that I did wrong as well. Like we'll have two great months and then already start increasing our expenses. No, baby. You want to have that consistent revenue, consistent incline before you start increasing your expenses. And you just never know what might happen. Embracing your failures as lessons, like, and I don't even wanna say failure, like it's just, it's really just lessons because no matter how many classes you take, no matter, no matter how many mentors you hire, no matter how many YouTube videos you watch, you are still going to fail because sometimes you'll just learn from experiences. Sometimes lessons are only from experience. Like I paid tens of thousands of dollars to a mentor and I, had moments where I have failed at something simply because that mentor I paid didn't experience what I went through. So how can they teach me something that they didn't even go through, you know? So you just want to understand that failures are just lessons and just understand that you learn from it, right? You learn from it, you grow from it, and it's just a circle of life. That's just how life goes, baby. Life has its peaks and its valleys, okay? Same thing with having a business. The last advice that I want to share that really, really helped me grow um, to seven figures only within two years of starting my business is that I focused on one thing. I know in this day and age, we are bamboozled with so much information on a daily basis new ideas new businesses new side hustles try this try that you have to get out of all of that distraction and focus on one thing so whatever you choose to pick focus on it now there's nothing wrong with switching up what you want to do because best believe i went from a cna to a realtor to a mobile notary from so many i, I tried so many different things before i got into the credit business and i feel like it's just because the credit business was the only business that one suited my lifestyle like all the other professions requiring me to be local physical it wasn't online like it didn't align with what i really wanted in my life and also it was the only business that i was consistent with so choose one path one angle be an expert in that one industry and just be consistent continue to show up 
continue to show up as long as the business model that you chose is not a declining business right it's not like a business that can it be expected to go out of business in the next few years? Just give it your all. Give it your all for some years until you automate the business, you hire employees, you have systems, and you're like at least 50% out of the business before you start new ventures, right? So focus on that one thing, like go all in on that one thing, put your head down on that one thing, be an expert in that one thing. Please do not fall in the trap of a serial entrepreneur that has 10 different streams of income all at once like don't get me wrong you want to have multiple streams of income but don't start multiple businesses all at once have one business that's going to make you your first seven figures when you have money when you have a system and team set up then you use that money to invest into assets um invest your money to have your money working for you and at that point when you're making seven figures you should not be the only person working in your business you should have help and then you could seek out other ways to create additional streams of income on top of that if you're really business savvy and by the time you're making seven figures a year you should be business savvy by then you can then create additional streams of income in your same niche like i have additional streams of income in my one niche which is financial industry like that's with business small business owners like that's my lane i'm not hopping into the trucking lane i'm not hopping into the airbnb lane i'm not hop like that's not my lane um not saying i won't do it but you know like i'm cool where i'm at i'm cool where i'm at but focus on one thing focus on one thing stay focused stay consistent and continuously show up like there's no secret magical pill to being a successful business owners it's literally just consistency dedication and discipline consistency dedication and discipline you'll be amazed okay if you found this video informational um drop below in the comments what was your favorite part about this video what tip are you going to take with you and um, what stood out to you if you haven't already subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next episode and also let me know what you would like for me to talk about next i'll see you next time